Hey guys, my name is John Paul Gentili. I play acoustic guitar for Bethel for probably the last decade, and I'm excited today to actually show you my way of approaching this instrument that has slowly over time become kind of like a glorified shaker. So to break that stigma, we're gonna go over in the first part of this lesson, the way that I approach G shapes, the way that I approach uh, C shapes as far as keys and formations, and then we're gonna go over some inversions, we're gonna go over some alternate voicings, and then in part two, I'm gonna go over how I approach and use a capo, and detuning, and then how to combine them together. Hopefully, throughout the whole part, you'll get more of a holistic of view and approach to playing uh, this acoustic guitar and really pulling out so much more than uh, just the shaker aspect. To watch part two, just click the link in the description, enter your email, and we'll send it right over to you. Let's get started. You ever get tired of just playing the same chords over and over again? Or feel stuck that you're kind of just a glorified shaker? Or just kind of wondering what is the purpose of you being up on that stage outside of just reading chord charts? like monotonously. Well, I wanna give you a couple tips. First of all, stay strong, <laughs> hold fast. Acoustic is so much more than a glorified shaker. And in later lessons, I'll even talk about how that shaker can still be awesome and how much of a percussive instrument this thing really can lend itself to over in Drumland. But for now, I just wanna show you real quick if you've ever been kind of wondering, what do I do in like say G shapes and say C shapes? Is there anything else? First of all, I wanna encourage you and say, probably 90% of what I'm about to play, you already know. So it's not necessarily about knowing more chords as much as it is learning the old ones that you know and learning how to play them just perfectly. So starting off, my G chord. Now I know a normal G chord would sound like this, but it's a little too Teletubby, happy, skippy for me. And more importantly, that, that three really puts such a different feeling and vibe into that chord that sometimes lyrically or just situationally, you're not there on that stage. So to stay away from everything, I only play this for my G chord. And I'm usually taking the fat of my palm and making sure that that mutes that E string. So it's real direct. Right? There's no color chord, there's nothing coming through the mix that's going to give us a different vibe than desired. So then when we get into the next chord, the two chord, or your A minor, typically. That to me, it's a little country western, a little spaghetti. Uh, so, I usually just admit that uh, ring finger. keeps it nice and open. Now, picking-wise, if you ever wanted to mess with that, that's nice. I also like sometimes I'll go up here. And sometimes when you're playing uh, more in a picking situation, that feels really nice. Now, getting on to our three chord, B minor, I know a lot of times people will play this. Now, this, just for you know, scholastic purposes. This is technically your one over three in your position, right? So this would be like your G chord. There's your B, if you remove this, there's like your one over three. Now, if you want to play like a B minor seven, you can actually keep this open. So you're lifting all your fingers up, making sure they're not hitting other strings. So you have your B minor seven right there, which is a little spooky, a little, you know, we're about to start something, not really sure where. Um, sometimes that's a little too saucy. And so I'll even just mute everything and just have these two strings. So playing kind of more of your uh, one over three vibe. Or if you want something stronger, I'll play up here. Now, before you go, what was that chord? I'll show you this as soon as I get done going through the rest of the formations. So there's my, my three. Now when it gets to four, you can do the exact same kind of thing as before. You've ever heard of a, you know, the CAD nine that's been talked about constantly in worship? What that actually means is C add nine. So you're adding the, the ninth note in that scale. So here's our C, here's our C, right? This is your classic chord. 
what you're doing is you're taking this C, right, which would be a one an octave up, so like your eight, and you're raising that one degree so that you're playing the nine. So that chord that you constantly play, if you weren't, if you were wondering what it was, this is, this is what a cad nine means, it actually is C add nine. So this works great as well, but sometimes if you want like a stronger kind of feel, I'll throw my ring finger on that G string. You can hear the difference. There's your C. There's your C with the G and the bass. Now since we're playing the key of G, you're never really gonna run into an issue playing that note. So that's 90% of the time, that's my go-to C that I'm playing in the key of G. It's just nice and rich and strong. Moving on to the D. At this point, most people know, uh, you can take this chord and just slide this up. Right, so now you have your C and you go to your D. If you want, you can throw that two, that A in the bass. That five over two sometimes is really nice. And if that's a little too daunting or sometimes those chord voicings are weird for you, take your typical D and just lift up your middle finger. And I'm most of the time, if I'm gonna play this kind of D shape, I'm playing it with that open, that open E in there. The goal in playing acoustic is you want it to be open, but you don't want it to be covered with colors, right? Because when it's covered with colors, you actually just rob from the keyboard, from the electric guitar player, from the, the vocalist. So you want to be able to have things that feel like a warm hug, but not this like massive quilt pattern where you're constantly distracted. Moving on from there, we have the E minor, the six. Now this is probably your typical open one. Nothing wrong with this chord. The chord sounds great. If you want to be in more of like a picking situation, sometimes I'll come up here and I'll play my E minor seven. Now this is all part of like a bar formation. So this would be your E minor. Now this formation is going to be the same, right? Wherever I go, it'll always be uh, whatever that root note is. When I bar it, it'll be a D minor, C minor, B minor. E minor. So I'll show you those in a little bit. And then finally the last one, most of the time I would say we don't really play a, a true seven, we'll play like a five over seven. So your D over F sharp, that's always a great place to play it. Another thing you can do is play up here if you want. But uh, very few and far between do I actually ever do that. Most of the time, this is great. So, those are kind of like my main ways that I'll play the typical chords in the key of G. Now, if I want to actually spice it up, I start thinking in inversions. And when I start thinking in inversions, I start really utilizing that scale. You know, the one that you practice and I had no idea why you learned that. This is like, this is its spotlight moment. So. Learning your scales, you start to learn numbers to the individual notes and not just the actual chord structure, right? So when I wanna play maybe a one over three, instead of playing down here, I start to build this out. And this is, this is movable for any kind of chord where the bass starts on the sixth string. So my one, two, three. So I know this is where my bass note's gonna be. Now using octaves, I just go down two and over two. I go for my octave. Now when I'm doing this, I'm always looking at my index finger being where the actual one is, or the G is in this case. So I immediately put my finger there. Now I remember where that three was. I'm grabbing that three here. And now I need a five to complete this triad. So using those octaves things, there's the five. I'll do the octave of that, and that gives me my final one. So now I have three, I skip that A string, one, five. And if I'm playing it like this with a pick, I usually take the fat part, the little pad of my uh, ring finger, and I cover that A string so it doesn't have any kind of buzzing. So that just sounds a little different then. This is a little open. 
is a little stronger. Now, continuing with the inversions, say I wanna put the five in the bass. I will follow suit, I wanna find that one first. So, since we're on the D string, and we're gonna end up going to that B string, right, we wanna go down two over three. Because otherwise, if we just did the same thing as those octaves, we're not getting that. So, there's your octave. So now I'm gonna put my finger, my index finger, where the one is, and I gotta find that five, right? So here on the bass, one, two, three, four, five. Now you could probably find this on YouTube, but a quick little reminder, in the major scale, if you need to find the next note on your fret, just think whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. You can look that up, there's plenty of places. Uh, that'll teach that more adequately than me. But these are all in uh, half steps. So when I say a whole step, it's just skipping one, right? Whole, whole, half. Whole, 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 half. And that's your whole scale. So anytime you need to try to, if you forget and you're like, oh gosh, how do I find that five, right? There's my five. Okay, so if we still remember from the octaves, there's my one, here's my five. Now we need to find the three. Now the three, using your octaves from before, remember it was here. So we just go down two over two. There's our three, so we have our five, our three, and our one. So that's nice and that kinda, it's all strong and it stays away color-wise of anything else. And then finally, which you probably won't use, but just kinda good to know. If we were to put the seven in the bass and we wanted to have our one, three, and five, actually, our D, our G, and our B are all right here, right? So as mentioned before with these inversions, there are different ways that you can actually add on to this because we were just talking about inverting triads. Now, if you add the seventh onto each one of these chords, then it looks a little different. The the G over B or the one over three, if we wanted to add our seven, we'd do the exact same thing as we did to find these chords before, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's my seven. I'm gonna go down two and over three. So this is where my seven is at. There's my three, my one, my five. Now to get that seven, I have to reposition. Now, if this feels too saucy to you, or it's not fitting, remember, it, you know, the chords that you're playing are only as cool as their ability to serve the song or serve the moment. So if you're playing this kind of chord while someone's singing a note that just feels like it's clashing, it's not the singer's fault, it's yours. So to adjust that, since we're playing the seven and we're only half step away from the one, if you wanted, just put your pinky up one and all of a sudden alleviates that issue. Getting back to the one with the fifth in the bass, if we want to find that seven, the seven of G would be F sharp. So a quick little reference, we know that that open string right here is G, and the 12th fret up is gonna be G as well, that's the octave. So to find the seven, you just go back one fret. Right? So this is a kind of cool, um, especially with acoustic, if you can find those notes where it's the actual next note in the scale, but on different strings, this kind of, it's got a really, really cool melodic options that, that it can offer you. Yeah, so that's fun. And then what I do is I don't just look at it like, okay, there's G, I can play the G one over three, or I can play the G, you know, the one over five. I'm looking at every single note that I could potentially play with the bass note up here. So what I mean by that is like, here's my G chord. If I want to play my A minor, well, this is still a note that's on the six string bass. So that, that thing still follows suit, right? Say I'm in, say I'm playing C, right, or four. If I wanted to, I could play the inversion of that, right? I'm still trying to find the one. I want the three, 
and the five. So it's the exact same formation. That's the beautiful thing about guitar. You learn the formations and then most of the time they actually are, are transferable all throughout the neck, staying on that string. So I'll use this a ton, especially if we're in the key of G and say we go to the four. When I play the inversion of the four, right? Playing the third in the bass, which in the key of G would actually be the six. The fun thing about this chord is that six is a relative minor to one. So this actually still works playing the G or playing this E over G. And then when we're playing the four chord, this actually sounds really, really nice when we're playing that four, you know? Um, so I'll play this a lot. If we dip down into a moment and I want to maintain that one, four, one, four, one, four progression, but give a little suggestion to the singer or give a little suggestion to the keyboard player or the electric player. Hey, what if we kind of went here? If it doesn't work, I go right back to, you know, standard kind of meat and potatoes. But those inversions really help you start to kind of explore things. And the cool thing about moving your bass note is it also just moves the overall feeling, right? Sometimes if you're playing with the bass note, uh, with the five in the bass, it has this kind of like, okay, we haven't landed yet. If you're playing with a three in the bass, it has this feeling like we're leaning forward but we're not there yet. And so those kind of things, when you're moving them around, can really, really help shape the emotion of that moment and really just help you kind of hear things a little bit differently. Now, further on, we'll get into finger picking and different kind of rhythms to give you the ability to really utilize some of these skills uh, in, in multiple scenarios. Moving on from that, let's go into C shapes because I know the majority of the time we're going from G shapes or C shapes. If we're playing just C and that's our one, right? I'd say most of the time I'm playing with that G in the bass as well. Um, now we go to the two, a lot of times, this D minor would be down here. It's just really inconvenient for me to play that. So I just don't, instead I'll play a bar chord like up here, right? But open it up. That sounds gorgeous to me. Now, another way you can play that, say if you're in a picking situation, and you don't want the... Sometimes what I'll do is, I'll try to stay away from that, and I'll just do this instead. See how that two sounds totally different? So sometimes I'll play that. When we get to the three and C, you can do, you can actually just hit this note, right? Because it's, it's an E minor. Most of the time, we're not necessarily playing that like straight three minor. We're usually playing a one over three, which is super easy because when I'm playing this one, I'm just hitting that, that uh, E bass. So it really kind of like moves us on to the next thing. Sometimes this can be really muddy. So based on the situation, if I feel like we're in a cleaner situation or it's a, it's a way more sensitive situation, I won't necessarily have this E and instead I'll grab the E here. Right, which moves us on to our next chord. The four. Now, instead of, instead of playing this big old hunker, which most of us spend the majority of our beginner acoustic days avoiding this chord. Instead, I kind of take the similar approach that I took with the C, I take that with the F. So what I'll do is... The only thing different that I'll do, instead of playing this, right, here's your F. I'll add the C on the bass, and then I'll actually remove this. For me, that just fits really nicely, especially going from one to four. And then your classic G. Once again, I'm usually 
since I'm in C shapes when I'm grabbing that G, I'm not switching formations as much as I'm just grabbing it with that ring finger. And then when we get to our six or A minor, I'm doing the exact same thing that I would do in our G formations. So you'll notice pretty quickly changing formations doesn't necessarily mean you need to learn a whole new group of chords. There's usually like a few, maybe two or three within each formation that you really need to know this whole fretboard up and down. Okay, so I know previously I showed you this chord, that D minor seven. Now this, this is a D minor seven, but that formation, right, finger formation that I'm actually doing on this fifth string bass is movable. And in the key of G, you can actually do a lot of these and still keep the other strings open, right? So in the key of G, Instead of playing this C, I'll play, I'll play this C, because it gives me a little bit uh, more top end. There's a little melody. This would be your major. Now this all comes from like your jazz bar chords, right? If I, if I put my middle finger down right here, that would be a C major seven. If I picked up my pinky and then put my middle finger down one string and barred this all, this would be a C minor seven. So I take this kind of approach, but instead of all the barring, I keep it open, right? And I don't really add the sevens that much. So it stays nice and focused. So here's your C, there's your D, if you wanna play that six, that E minor, right? And then say you wanted to play your D over F sharp, I just go because it kind of stays out of the, the, the rest of the, the notes. And then finally, there's your G, right? So technically, even when we were playing this one, right, that A minor, it's really as if I put my finger here. So here's my two, here's my three, four, five, six, seven, one. You could do a lot of different melodies with that. But just remember, this would be your major formation, this would be your minor formation. And that can not just be used for G, but that could also use, be used for C. Like I was saying before, when we were in that C shape, I wanted to go to the two. There's my two, right? There's your one, there's your two, if you want to go to three. And then your four, your five. Your six, and it just, it keeps going. It follows the same suit. So those are like real, real quick tips, but you can start to, once you actually figure out what each note is, that plays huge into be able to admit them or put in a note that you actually like when it comes to chord voicing or having some kind of melody line that you could suggest to the worship leader. Now that we've kind of covered some ways that I approach G formations and C formations, Let's hop into how I approach capoing and how I approach some alternate tuning stuff, drop tunings, different stuff like that. To get part two, click the link below, enter in your email, and we'll send that right over to you. I'll see you there.